Welcome to your space journey. We are diving deep into the Perseid meteor shower, you know, those amazing cosmic fireworks you see in the summer. Our mission today, cut through the noise, figure out what it peaks. We're looking at August 11th and 12th, trace it back to Comet Swift Tuttle, and crucially, give you the best tips so you can actually see it well. Get ready for a real spectacle. Yeah, it's definitely one of the highlights of the year for sky watchers. And fundamentally, a meteor shower, well, it's just tiny bits of dust, sometimes no bigger than sand, hitting our atmosphere super fast. They burn up, creating those flashes we call shooting stars. A shower happens when Earth plows through the debris field left by a comet. And the Perseids, they have this great reputation, right? They're known for being bright, lots of them, and pretty reliable year after year. Makes them a summer favorite. What is it about this shower that makes it so uh, consistently good compared to some others? That's a good point. Reliable is the word. Some showers can be a bit unpredictable, but the Perseids, they come from this really dense, stable stream of debris from Comet Swift-Tuttle. Plus, the way Earth hits that stream, the angle that helps create those bright, fast meteors people love. Okay, so we know what we're looking for. The big question is when. When do we see these things? Yeah. The shower itself is active for quite a while, isn't it? Like mid-July. Yeah, roughly July 14th or 17th, somewhere around there. And it keeps going until late August, maybe even the start of September. I think August 22nd to September 1st-ish. But for the absolute best show. The peak. Right, the peak. For 2025, you're circling August 11th to 13th on your calendar. The very best views will probably be just before dawn breaks on August 12th. Or, you know, the mornings of the 11th and 12th are also really good bets. And hey, if the 11th is cloudy where you are, don't give up. The 12th should still be excellent. People often report seeing shooting stars every couple of minutes after midnight if the conditions are right. Well, under really ideal conditions, meaning dark skies, away from city lights, you could see maybe 50 to 70 meteors an hour. That's almost one a minute. NASA sometimes quotes figures up to 100 per hour. And yeah, in certain years, called outburst years, it can jump way higher, like 150, even 200 an hour. Wow, that sounds incredible, almost constant. It can feel like it. Now, there's this term astronomers use, zenithal hourly rate, or ZHR. That's the theoretical maximum under absolutely perfect conditions. For the Perseids, it can be up to 150, but um, what you actually see is usually lower. It depends on light pollution, haze, where the radiant point is in your sky. That difference between the ZHR and reality kind of shows how observation is always this mix of the cosmos and our own local conditions. It also explains why just before dawn is prime time, the sky is darkest then, and Earth is rotating into the meteor stream, like driving in terrain instead of away from it. You encounter more. It's amazing to think these little streaks of light have an origin story, a source. You mentioned Comet Swiss Tuttle. Tell us about that. Exactly. Every Perseid meteor is a tiny piece of Comet Swift Tuttle. This comet, uh, it was discovered back in 1862 by Lewis Swift and Horace Parnell Tuttle working independently. And it's big, really big for a comet. The nucleus is about 16 miles or 26 kilometers across. It's actually the largest object we know of that makes repeated passes near Earth. Its orbit around the sun takes about 133 years. Okay, wait. If it only swings by every 133 years, how do we get a shower every single August? Ah, uh, good question. Because the comet leaves behind a trail of debris along its entire orbital path, like uh, cosmic dust bunnies. Every August, Earth's orbit intersects that trail, so we're not hitting the comet itself, just its leftover bits, tiny pieces of ice and rock. Yeah. These are the crumbs that burn up. That makes sense. And people have been seeing this for ages, right? I read something about ancient Chinese records. Oh, yeah. The first known record is from China, way back in 36 AD. But it wasn't until 1866 that the Italian astronomer Giovanni Schiaparelli scientifically linked the shower to Comet Swift-Tuttle. It really shows how science builds over time, from just noticing something to actually understanding the mechanics behind it. There was even some tricky prediction work in the 20th century about its return. Right. And wasn't there some uh, concern about it hitting Earth at some point? That sounds kind of alarming. There were some early calculations, yeah, that suggested a pretty close pass in 2126. Caused a bit of a stir. A bit of a stir, I bet. Yeah, yeah. but don't worry. More precise calculations show it'll miss us by a very comfortable 15 million miles. That's 24 million kilometers. Totally safe. Even another pass in 3044, which looks closer maybe a million miles, is still considered safe. It's a good reminder that science refines its understanding. You, okay. Good to know. And the key thing is, these meteoroids, the bits that make the shower, they're tiny, like sand grains. They burn up completely high in the atmosphere, even though they get incredibly hot, over 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Almost none ever reach the ground because they're fragile, icy bits from a comet, not dense, rocky chumps from asteroids like meteorites are. They're just spectacles, not threats. Okay, so we've got the science, the history. Now for the really important part. Yeah. Actually seeing them. Yeah. How do we, you know, make the most of it? No special gear needed, right? Nope. That's the beauty of it. Your eyes are the best tool. And the simple answer for where to look, pretty much anywhere in the sky, really. They're visible globally, but the view is definitely best from the northern hemisphere down to mid-southern latitudes. Perfect. So let's get into the practical tips. What's number one? Number one, without a doubt, get away from lights. Light pollution is the absolute killer for meteor showers. You need dark skies. Think rural areas, parks, maybe even a large backyard if it's dark enough. Mountaintops are great if you can manage it. Okay, dark location. Yeah. What else? Patience. Critically important. Your eyes need time to adapt to the dark. Give them a good 20, maybe 30 minutes. And seriously, do not look at your phone screen. It ruins your night vision instantly. But put the phone away. Then, find a wide open view. You want as much sky visible as possible, ideally straight overhead. Trying to peek between trees is just frustrating. Makes sense. And comfort. Yes. Be comfortable, bring a reclining chair, a blanket, maybe a sleeping bag to lie on. You'll be looking up for potentially a long time. Trust me, a sore neck is not how you want to remember the Perseids. And these meteors are fast, just a second or two. If you're fiddling around, you'll miss them. By the time someone yells, look, it's gone. Okay, so comfy, wide view, patient. Where exactly in the sky should I be looking? Towards Perseus. Ah, good question. They're called Perseids because they appear to radiate from the constellation Perseus. But paradoxically, don't stare right at Perseus. You'll actually see longer streaks and probably more meteors overall if you look at a dark patch of sky about 30 or 40 degrees away from the radiant point. Just pick a dark area and scan around gently. Interesting. Okay, anywhere but directly at the source. And last thing. Check the weather forecast. Clouds are obviously a showstopper. You need clear or at least mostly clear skies. Less haze and humidity is better too. Got it. Anything else for this year, 2025? Yes, one important heads up for 2025, the moon. There's going to be a waning gibbous moon, and it rises around 10 p.m. local time. That means it'll be pretty bright, especially in the hours before dawn when the shower is usually best. So if the moon is up, try to position yourself so it's uh, maybe behind you or blocked by a tree or building if possible. Face away from it to minimize its glare, washing out the fainter meteors. Okay, good tip. Moon management required this year. So wrapping it up, the Perseids really are this amazing show. Bright meteors, often with those lingering trails or trains. Just a fantastic summer experience, especially up here in the Northern Hemisphere. Absolutely. And maybe a final thought to leave you with. Think about the old Greek stories. One legend links the Perseids to Zeus visiting Danae, Perseus's mother, as a shower of gold. It kind of adds this layer of, I don't know, mythology and fleeting beauty to it all. Each meteor you see is just this momentary flash there for you to witness. Pretty special, isn't it? It really is. A great reminder of the wonders up there. Well, thank you for joining us for this deep dive into the Perseid meteor shower on your space journey. We really hope you get out there and catch some cosmic fireworks. Your space journey.